Sometimes when working in 3D, you may want to morph objects into different objects. And sometimes you want to do that with points, other times you want to do that with the actual geometry. So we're going to go over the two different ways on how to do that inside of Houdini today. So let's take a look at what we're going to do. So this one obviously is going to be the geometry version. And then for the point version, it'll look something like this. So a couple different techniques here on how to morph objects between two different objects or as many objects as you want. Uh, but let's go ahead and show you how to do this. So I'm gonna drop a geometry node in here and then we'll need our geometry. So I'm just gonna use the squid and the rubber toy as our test or as our geometry. And then for, we'll do the, the point uh, morph first. So we'll use a scatter and then I'm just going to copy and paste that over and just wire these up. So we just want to create some points on our geometry. I'm just going to crank this up to something like 50,000 should work. And it looks like I was doing it on the wrong one, the wrong node. And that's 5,000, so 50,000. So there we go. Now we have both of our nodes set up here with 50,000 points scattered across them. And then to morph between them, it's pretty simple. We just drop in a point, whoops, a point bop. So drop one of those down and then wire it up. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna jump into our node. So first of all, we wanna drop in a import point attribute. This is what we're gonna import our second geometry, our our test geometry here, so our rubber toy. That's what we're gonna be importing into our point op. And then we're gonna use a mix node to mix between the two. So we'll wire up the first one because this node right here is going to be essentially our first input. And then we'll wire that up. And then our second input will be our input from points or import, import point attribute. So right away, it's not gonna work because we wanna use a secondary input instead of the file. And as you can see, we're kind of morphing between the two now. So we're at a 50% bias. So this is 50% morphed between the two objects. So if I set it to zero, we get our squid. If I set it to one, we get our rubber toy. So just to be able to animate this, we wanna zoom in. We can. Uh, middle click on the bias here and then we can promote that as a parameter and then we can use this outside of the point bot. Just make it a little bit easier. Now if we wanted to animate this we can just go to frame one and we can alt left click on our interpolation bias bias and then let's go to frame 45 and set this all the way up to one and then just alt left click again. So right away this is giving us something close to what we're looking for. But as you can see, the points just kind of morph, kind of like a, a sand type uh, effect just going between the two. So we want to add a little bit of a variation to that. So the way we're going to go about doing that is we're going to jump back into our point bot and we're going to drop in an add node. And we can go ahead and just wire this up. And then we're going to use a noise. So I'm going to use a turbulent noise. And I'm going to drop this into our second input and wire up our first input into our position. And then I'm also gonna go in here and I'm going to just promote this amplitude parameter so we can use this outside as well. And then I'm also gonna go up here and edit our parameter interface. I'm just gonna set this amplitude from negative one as the lower range to zero because I don't wanna go past zero because I just want to drag this straight to zero and have it be not affecting our points at all. So again, we can animate this. So I'll just alt left click on frame one and then I'll go about halfway through and I'll put this all the way up to one, give us some amplitude in there. So this is affecting our geometry or our points now. So it's adding a bunch of noise to our points and just offsetting them based off of the noise. And then once we go to frame 45, we want to be back down to zero because as you can see, it's still affecting 
and doesn't fully make the rubber toy that we're looking for. So we'll set that back to zero and I'll left click in. And then as you can see, we got some noise going on and a little bit more variation going into our point pop here. So that's basically the essentials of how you go about doing the point morph. Um, you can get as complicated with it as you want and really dial in all these values of the, uh, the turbulent noise and make it as unique as you want, but that's pretty much the basics of it. So let's go ahead and we'll make the, uh, the secondary morph here, so our, just our geometry morph, and then drop in the geo node, and then we'll just bring in our test geometry again. So we'll do the squid, and then we'll also bring in our rubber toy. And then from here, we want to make these into VDB. So we're going to do VDB from polygons and wire that up. And then I'm just going to copy and paste that over. And then just so that they have the same sort of level of detail, I'm going to right click on our voxel size and go to our secondary VDB. And I'm going to paste relative references. So now as we change our first geometry's uh, voxel size. So if I put, set this to something more detailed, so something like a 0.2 value, did I not do that correctly? Looks like maybe I did that incorrectly. Copy parameter and then, oops, let's go ahead and delete the channel and we can paste relative references again and get rid of all of that garbage. Looks like for some reason, oh, that's right. Cause as I said, it's 0.2, not 0 0.02, my mistake. So now it's a little bit more detailed and you can see as we change this, if I set this back to 0.1, it gets less detailed. I set that back down to 0.02, it comes more detailed. So we're gonna use a VDB morph for this. I'm just gonna go back to frame one. Um, so if we were to drop in a VDB morph, we can just wire these up, but this is gonna be kind of slow to go across the thing. It's not really working correctly, um, but once you do get it working, it is um, kind of slow. So we wanna actually not do that right away, and we wanna drop in a solver and wire this up. And we'll jump in here, and I'm just gonna move the input one out of the way because we aren't gonna want that. And then now we're going to drop in the VDB morph. And we can wire these up. And then I'm also going to just delete this channel here because I don't want it to be going based off of our timeline. I want to affect it basically on my own terms here. So you can see as I change this, it's not affecting anything. And if I actually go through here, it is starting to affect it. So if we go ahead and set our timeline back to one and set this down to zero, and then we go to our last frame, we can set this up to generally one doesn't fully get you there. So I've noticed something, some values larger than one usually takes to get to the final secondary input. So maybe something like 10. So now if I alt left click again, we can see, as I play through here, you're gonna see that it's morphing between the two now, which is what we want. It's a little bit slow because I am recording at the same time as trying to run that. So not uh, working fully how you would want it. Oops, and now we can just do a VDB convert or convert VDB and then wire this up and set this back to a polygon and now you can see that we got our polygon uh, our polygons back so if I just finish caching this out here just take a second it's actually fully done so let's go ahead and just change our frame range down 
I have noticed for some reason that uh, when you once you animate this value, so now that we've animated this, we can go back. Let's actually set our timeline back to 45 seconds. If I go back into here, or 45 frames, sorry, not 45 seconds. So I set this back to something like two and alt left click. Once you do it once um, as a high value, it tends to, for some reason, animate quicker than what you're actually, uh, would have been seeing before. So if you notice, I had to crank that all the way up to 10, whereas now it's getting there a lot quicker than what I was getting before. So you can see it's already actually done here. So you can actually probably go back to frame 45 and set that to one. And you can see that now it is working and it's still not working exactly how the frames work. I'm not exactly sure why that is, um, but you just have to play around with it and get it exactly how the timing that you want. Cause you can see at about a time step of, what is that? 0.36, that is auto or that is already done. Whereas before, when I was up at 10, it was just getting done at probably around like nine or so. So that's basically the essentials of how you go about doing the um, morph, the geometry morph. Uh, so pretty simple to set up for that as well. Not too difficult and you can get some good looking effects going there as well. So if you have any questions on how to go about doing this um, that I didn't cover or some sort of effect that you wanna add on top of that, you can go ahead and leave those in the comments below and I'll can, I can see if I can figure those out for you. Otherwise, I do have a bunch more tutorials on my channel uh, for Houdini as well as Cinema 4D and Redshift. So if that's something that you are interested in, go ahead and check those out. But make sure you guys also subscribe so you don't miss any of those upcoming videos that I have coming out. I do have some interesting stuff that I'm working on. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of that. But thank you guys for watching and have a good day.